Hi dogs this is Dr Yasmin from the Royal Dog Line In the 5 minute guideline series we will discuss the black transferrin in obstetrics this is the green top guideline number 47 may 2015 as you know we always discuss under the headings of the introduction prevention of the anemia in the pregnancy and the treatment if needed with options general principles of the blood transfusions strategies to reduce the use of banked blood and the management of the major obstetrical hemorrhage as you all know that the obstetrical hemorrhage is one of the leading cause of the maternal morbidity and the mortality specifically in the underdeveloped countries and it accounts for 10% of the direct maternal deaths the idea of this guideline is to avoid the blood transfusion until or unless it is really needed because it is associated with the transmission of many infections allergenic reactions and the development of the atypical antibodies how we can reduce the risk of the blood transfusion that is by the diagnosis of the anemia so that's why the guideline recommends you should screen and treat the anemia in the antenatal period so that's why to screen for it we should know the hemoglobin at 28 weeks and then at uh, booking also but for the twins we do one more uh, hemoglobin testing at 20 to 24 weeks which is also recommended by the nice guideline for the diagnosis it is said that for the first trimester if the hemoglobin is less than 11.5 grams per liter second and third trimester if it is less than 10.5 grams per liter and in the postpartum period if it is less than 10 grams per liter this is called as an anemia the treatment is the first line is the oral uh, iron and parenteral is given if the patient is non compliant you have less time interval before the delivery there is an intolerance along with it you have to give the dietary advice these are important questions from the exam point of view vitamin c increases the absorption of the non heme iron while the tea and the coffee it reduces the absorption hospital delivery in cases where you think that the patient is high risk and active management of the third stage of labor so these are all the strategies to overcome the risk of the blood transfusion for the general principles for the blood transfusion a valid consent is always needed in case of an, an emergency if you have to give the blood transfusion so always go back in the notes and take the consent retrospectively you can get this question in the exam in the form of a scenario and all the pregnant women they should have the blood group antibody testing at booking at 28 weeks group and screen of the uh, sample in the pregnancy should not be older than 3 days and placenta previa if it is admitted twice per week you have to do the group and screen for antibodies and keep the blood ready all the blood should be abo compatible and uh, cal and cmv negative uh, cytomegalovirus and the platelet should be transfused in elective cases What are the strategies to reduce the use of the banked blood? It is said that autologous blood deposit is not recommended to be given to the patient. Intraoperative cell salvage. This is a new modality of the treatment, and you can get many questions from there. It was previously used in orthopedics, but now in obstetrics we are also using it in the major obstetrical hemorrhage. And it has to be given only in the cases where you think that the blood loss is greater than twenty percent of the total estimated blood volume. and it has reduced the need for allogeneic transfusion from 23 to 2.9%. Here is about the NTD to be given for those women in which you give the intraoperative cell salvage in the cesarean when the woman is Rh negative and you have to give the cell salvage then you will give 1500 international unit of NTD and perform the Klehauer test 30 to 40 minutes. after giving the ntd and give her additional doses if needed leukocyte depletion uh, filters should be used in order to remove the common markers of the amniotic fluid contaminators the management of the obstetrical hemorrhage with blood components you have to follow the local protocols and follow the skills and drills there are mechanical strategies as well and the management of the obstetrical hemorrhage with the blood component this is a very important slide and rbcs there is no confirmed criteria regarding the rbc transfusion but it is said that the hemoglobin if it drops to less than 6 grams per liter you have to give the packed rbcs regarding the fresh frozen plasma a dose of 12 to 15 ml per kg for every 6 packed rbcs and the aim is as we said in our previous guidelines that the pta pta should be less than 1.5 times the normal 
And uh, here you can also get the exams question that FFP takes about 30 minutes to thaw. Cryoprecipitate, you need to give the two units of the cryoprecipitate in major obstetrical hemorrhage and you need to keep the fibrinogen which is more than 1.5 grams per liter additional can be given according to the situation and you don't need to give entity in cases of ffp and cryoprecipitate if you give the positive blood ffp and cryoprecipitate to a negative woman so when the platelet should be used, our aim is to keep the platelet above 15 to 10 raised to per 9 per little in acutely bleeding patient. And the trigger to give the platelet is 75 into 10 raised to per 9. And this is very important to give the 250 international unit NTD if you give RHD positive platelet to a RHD negative woman. It is sufficient to give 250 international unit immunoglobulin to cover the five adult therapeutic doses of the platelet and it can be given within about six weeks. If the patient she has got a thrombocytopenia, you can give it subcutaneously. This is again an exam question. The pharmacological strategies for the management of the major obstetrical hemorrhage is, is talking about the recombinant factor 7a. It is licensed for the use in inherited bleeding disorders. It can be used for the treatment of the life-threatening postpartum hemorrhage, but you should not delay the other management options. There is no evidence to support the prophylactic use in the cesarean section. And you should always keep in mind that it is associated with the risk of arterial thrombosis. In summary, screening for the anemia should be done 28 weeks as well as booking for normal cases and 20 to 24 weeks additionally in the twins. Hemoglobin less than 6 grams per liter needs the packed RBCs in cases of the patients who do not have the time for the iron or for those patients who are bleeding according to the situation. FFP dosage, cryoprecipitate, bladelet transfusions and cell salvage, all of them, they are very important from your exam point of view. So dear doctors, let's see the blood transfusion in obstetrics, the green top guideline number 47. As you can see, the important areas have been marked over here and you need to memorize those things which I have discussed in the summary as well as about the trigger points when, when to give the blood and when to give the platelets etc. NTD is also very important. I would appreciate if you subscribe to our channel, like it and share it with your friends and also I wish you good luck for your exam. Thank you.